Very good evening, Akansh. Welcome to Akshara Online Classes. This is your professor, the physics faculty. Let's start the session. Today I'll explain a new concept uh, that is fluid mechanics. Understand? So in the last class we completed about. Uh, uh, can you have an idea? We completed about uh, gravitation. In that gravitation we completed about force. Force between the masses. Next uh, gravitational force, center of mass, center of gravity and uh, what is the position of the center of mass, center of gravity for different positions. This concept we completed in the earlier classes. Today, I will start a new concept that is fluid mechanics. Understand? I shall start that fluid mechanics. <coughs> fluid. Mechanics. Fluid mechanics not appearing, na? Fluid fluid mechanics. Understand? Fluid mechanics. <coughs> that fluid mechanics. So here, what is meant by fluid mechanics? The study about the fluid. The study about fluid is known as a fluid mechanics. So first of all, what is meant by fluid, and what things we can call as a fluid? Let's see now. Fluid. So here, fluid means it is a substance. Fluid means it is a substance. Understand? Which can flow, which can flow from, which can flow from one place to, it can flow one place to other. Fluid is a what? Fluid is a what? Fluid is a substance, it is a substance which can flow from one place to other. And uh, Generally, gases, gases and gases and liquids, liquids are called are called fluid. Which one? Which things we call as a fluid? Gases and liquids, both both we can call as a fluid. Commonly, we can call these two a fluid. Now, but what is the difference between this gases and uh, liquids? What is the differences between this gases and liquids? Let me take first uh, gases. Or else liquids I will take. If you observe the liquids, the liquid, liquid, liquid have Liquid have what kind of shape? The liquid have container shape. Shape of the liquid have container shape. The liquid have container shape. And next, uh, the shape of the container is what? Shape a liquid is a liquid having what kind of shape? Shape of the container. Next. Uh, it will have definite volume. It will have definite uh, definite uh, volume. And next, uh, these these are not compressible. Not compressive. These are not compressible. Liquids are not compressible, and. Uh, they, they are uh, having definite shape and they are having the container shape. They are having definite volume. They are having the container shape. And uh, liquid will exert the pressure. Liquid uh, will exert, exert the pressure. Pressure on the container volumes. On containers, 
container walls. So this is all about what liquids. Same way, if you observe the gases. If you observe the gases, so what are the gases? So gases uh, <clears throat> does not have definite shape. Gases not have not have definite uh, shape. Gases not have definite shape. And next, uh, it will have it will have volume. It will have volume. It is definite volume or uh, variable volume. It is not having definite volume. It not have definite volume. Not have definite definite value. Definite volume. And next, uh, these are compressible. Liquid gases are compressible. Gases are compressible. And next, uh, liquid will exert, gases will exert, uh, gases will exert uh, pressure, pressure on the sides of the container. So this is the main difference between the main main things between the liquid and gases. Liquid has shape of the container, gases not having the shape of the container. It will occupy whole container volume. And it has definite uh, volume, but uh, the gas is not having definite volume because they are occupying the whole container, so that they are not having definite volume. Understand? And the next, uh, so these are the difference between uh, what gas and liquids. Even even though these things, gas and liquids, uh, both will exert the what? Both will exert the both. Combined call as a liquids because they are flowing from one place to other place. But the common thing between these two is liquids and gases both are exerting the pressure. So that uh, we should learn that pressure. And this topic is the study about this fluid is nothing but fluids are nothing but fluid mechanics. But here this fluid mechanics has two branches. So look at the fluid mechanics, branches of fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics. You see the branches of fluid mechanics. So the first branch is first branch is fluid and statics. Fluid uh, statics and the second <coughs> second one is uh, fluid <coughs> fluid dynamics. Fluid statics and fluid dynamics. These are the two branches of uh, fluid. Fluid mechanics. Okay. So one is fluid fluid statics, fluid dynamics. Okay. What is mean by fluid statics? Fluid statics means the study about fluid which are at uh, rest position. Okay. The study about fluids which are in rest position. Next, uh, what is this uh, fluid uh, dynamics? Fluid dynamics. What is this fluid dynamics? Fluid dynamics means study about a fluid which are in which are in motion. Which are in motion. Understand? The study about fluid which are at uh, rest is known as fluid statics. The study about uh, fluid which are in motion is known as what? Fluid dynamics. Commonly, these branches are dealing with what? These two branches are dealing with what? Fluids only. That is called fluid mechanics. Understand? Now, even this fluid statics, fluid dynamics, Actually, first of all, we must discuss about fluid statics. Later, we will go for fluid dynamics. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, anyhow, these liquids 
combined liquid and gases are called fluids but there is a common point between these two is they are exerting the pressure so first of all we will learn about pressure later we will go to the other terms related to the concept this concept understand so let us write down the definition first word pressure pressure so let us talk about pressure now so what is mean by pressure so here we can simply define pressure we can simply define pressure as the thrust force acting per unit area the thrust force acting per unit area is known as a pressure the formula is how what is the pressure here thrust force thrust force acting per unit area per unit area is called is called <coughs> pressure the thrust force acting per unit area is called pressure so you can write the formula by using the statement the pressure p is equal to pressure p is equal to thrust force thrust thrust per area the pressure p is equal to what thrust per area here thrust let me first let us learn first of all thrust later coming to the once again this formula write down thrust meaning thrust what is the thrust here thrust means it is a force it is a force thrust is a force acting thrust is a force acting perpendicular thrust is a force acting perpendicular to the surface thrust is a force acting perpendicular to the surface is known as thrust is a force acting perpendicular to surface is known as thrust is a force acting perpendicular to surface you know thrust is a force acting perpendicular to surface or else any force acting perpendicular to the force perpendicular surface is known as thrust force that way also you can define so i will give one example here let us take uh, some examples here what is the mean by thrust this is a surface you can imagine when this is a surface on the surface three forces are acting that is f1 f2 and f3 among the three forces which force uh, you can consider as a thrust force now here how many forces i took here three forces f1 f2 f3 among the three which is a, a thrust force among these forces which is a thrust force tell me f1 or f2 or f3 which force is a thrust force second force why because f2 is acting you are right you are right here f2 is acting perpendicular to the surface even though these forces are acting but we cannot call this f1 f2 or f1 f3 are the thrust forces only you can you can call f3 as a thrust force understand so the thrust force acting per unit area is known as what is known as pressure is equal to what thrust by area when thrust by area so here thrust force is nothing but force always acting perpendicular to the surface so you can represent as a f perpendicular by area so now finally you can write thrust force as f perpendicular by area this is the general formula for what thrust force this is a general formula for pressure and here here this is a force curl what is the units for force the units for force is newton the area units are meter square so newton meter square is a unit for what pressure so this newton meter square also known as pascal this newton meter square also known as what pascal <coughs> newton meter square also known as pascal actually pascal is a si unit of the pressure 
न्यूटन मीटर स्क्वेर इज ए एम के सिस्टम पास्कल इज ए एस आई सिस्टम एस आई सिस्टम यूनिट्स फॉर प्रेजर इज पास्कल एम के सिस्टम इज न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वेर एनी हाउ सो दिस इज अ फॉर्मूला फॉर प्रेजर एंड दिस इज अ दिस इज वाट दिस इज अट्स फॉर प्रेजर एंड हियर वन मोर थिंग प्रेजर इज ए स्केलर क्वान्टिटी प्रेजर इज ए स्केलर क्वान्टिटी Pressure is a scalar quantity because it not have a particular direction. If you observe the pressure here, pressure is equal to force per area. Here force. So the, SI of yeah, SI unit of pressure is Pascal. M K S units are Newton per meter square. Okay. okay. Now the thing here, something I am explaining. Yeah, pressure is a scalar quantity because. So even though if you observe the formula force and area are both are scale, vector quantities but the pressure is a scalar because the pressure is not having particular direction if you observe any liquid inside the pressure the pressure will act in all directions because of that reason we are defining the pressure as a scalar quantity so pressure is a scalar quantity now by using this pressure pressure formula we have some application in our daily life let's see the applications uh, by seeing the pressure see pressure is equal to pressure is equal to force by area here the applications of the pressure in our daily life applications of pressure in our daily life applications of pressure applications of pressure first application is sharpening the knife sharpening the knife sharpening the knife what is the sharpening the knife so generally we do sharpen the knives because to cut easily but how why if you sharpen the edges of the knife it will cut easily so the reason behind the thing is the reason behind the thing is the reason behind the thing is pressure understand the pressure is the reason understand pressure is the reason when we sharpen the knife when we sharpen the knife the edges of the knife will be decreases the edges of the area of the knife will be decreases when adjust will decreases if you observe the formula for pressure pressure is equal to force by area so which means that pressure is inversely proportional to area and the meaning is what when area increases pressure will be decreases when area decreases pressure will increases but to cut the to cut the something to cut something we require more pressure in order to improving the pressure by using the same force in order to improving the pressure we should decrease the area of the edges when we decrease the area of the edges what going to be happen when you decrease the area of the edges so when you ah uh, the pressure will increases by the same force by using the same force we can increase the pressure when you increase the pressure we can cut easily so that is how the we do sharpen the edges of the knife understand next uh, one more example is in our daily life the one more example is <clears throat> the one more example is school um, i mean bag strips school bag strips the strips of school bags will be bulked understand the strip of school bags will be bulked why do the strips of the strips will be bulked understand why we have strips would be bulked bulked in size actually generally the school bag strips having bulked belt why the school bag i mean belt 
School bag strips we have, not tin, tin, they are having belt, very large area. Why they are having very large area? Because the same thing. Here pressure is, pressure is right proportional to the area. Look at here, when the area of the school bag strips will increase, what is going to be happen? Pressure will be reduces. So that when pressure is uh, reduces on our shoulders, we feel somewhat comfort. That is the reason the school bag strips having very belt in size. If it is, uh, for example, if it is made up of a thin surfaces, what is going to be happen? Area will decreases, area decreases, pressure will increases. That pressure is acting on the shoulders. It will give some pain. That is the reason the school back strips will make as larger in size, very bulk surfaces to, to reduce the pressure. Understand? Even camel. We prefer camel as a camel as a vehicle for the deserts. Yes or no? Why do you prefer camel as a vehicle for vehicle in the deserts? Because when camel foot is uh, very larger in size, foot of the camel is very larger in size, the la if it is larger area, the pressure will reduce us. When pressure is reduces, it cannot sink into the sand easily, so it can walk easily on in the deserts. Because when pressure, pressure is reduces, it cannot sink into the sand. Understand? When it is cannot sink into the sand, it can walk easy. That is the reason we prefer the camel as a vehicle for in deserts. Understand? So, uh, camel. Next, uh, do we have any ideas about this pressure? I mean, uses of pressure. One is sharpen the edges of the knife, school bag strips, and camel is preferring as a vehicle in deserts. Even uh, we pref we have larger surface area tires to in order to uh, move easily on the in the on the roads. So that is also because of the that is also reason for what reason for pressure only. Got my point? So these are the some ex these are the some examples related to pressure in our daily life. Understand? <coughs> now, but. Here I have a question. I will ask some question, exa example questions. Question number one. The question number one is, question number one is, so tell me the question number one. Let us take, uh, we have a, a box. We have a box uh, like this. The box uh, dimensions are, dimensions of the box are, length is, uh, 10 meters or sorry 10 centimeters 20 centimeters you can take 10 centimeters you can take this is a 5 centimeter you can take now this in this box mass is this box mass is 10 kg the box mass is 10 kg and uh, the dimensions of the box is a uh, 10 10 uh, 20 10 5 20, 10, 5 is the dimensions of the box. The weight of the box is 10 kg. Now, what is the, this is uh, placed on the floor. This is placed on where? On a floor. When it is placed on the floor, what is the pressure acting on the floor due to this weight of the box? What is the pressure acting on the floor? Pressure acting on the box due to this weight of the due to its weight. Tell me, what is the formula for pressure? The formula for pressure is, pressure is equal to force by area. The force must be thrust force. Here, the weight is act like a force. Here, here, pressure is equal to what? Force by area. Here, this force, who is act like a force here? The weight of the, the weight of the box is act like a force. When the force is, uh, weight is act like a force, then the pressure is equal to, what is weight here? Mg. Mg is a weight. And what is the area? Area is nothing but 20 into 10. 
20 20 into 10 so what is the 20 into 10 20 into 10 will give the area of this container now 20 into 10 but it is in centimeters converting to meters that would be 10 power minus 2 10 power minus 2 that is 10 power minus 4 so finally 10 into 10 into 200 into 10 power 4 finally what is the answer so 2 ones are so p is equal to 10 power 4 by 2 10 power 4 means 10,000 by 2 that is 5,000 5,000 what is the units for 5,000 5,000 what is Pascals 10,000 Pascal is the answer Ma? Here this is 20 centimeter, this is 20 cent 10 centimeters. So I have converted it into meters. When I convert it to meter, this 20 into 10 power minus 2, here also 20 into 10 power minus 2. If I, um, I mean, uh, add these two, you have 10 power minus 4 is a denominator. So that way you have the answer. Next, same thing, in the same problem, if I if I place the object in this way as a 20 and 10 centimeter, so this is a pressure. But same thing if I, I mean, if I make rotate this object. When I rotate this object, now this part of the area is uh, supporting to the ground. Then what is the pressure exerted on the pressure exerted on the ground? Tell me. Now this part is touching the ground now. When this part is touching the ground, then what is the pressure? Formula for pressure is? Pressure is equal, tell me. Force by area. Force by area. Force is same. How much force? 10 into 10 because 10 kg acceleration due to gravity is 10. But which area is uh, contact with the ground? This 10 into 5. 10 into 5 into 10 power minus 4. Now 10 10 gets cancelled, 5 1s are 5 2s are, then 2 into 10 power 4 Pascal. Before how much is the pressure? 500 Pascal. Now, now here how many Pascals? 20,000 Pascal. Why 20,000 Pascal? In this case the area decreases. When area decreases, pressure will increase it together. So that uh, here acting more pressure than this. In this case, more area, in this case less area is uh, contact with the surfaces, contact with the ground. So in the second case, you'll observe more pressure. Yes. Understand? Yes. <clears throat> Anyhow, today we'll stop the session. We, I mean, we're done with time. I'll stop the session. In next class, we'll meet. Okay, bye.